Hello and welcome everybody. According to Islamic belief, when we die, we are going to be raised again on the day called the Our Day. After that, for a while, the Doomsday or the Judgment Day will come and we will be judged in front of Allah and His angel for our good and bad deeds. And the most laughing part in this sequence of events is the fact that we are going to be given a book. Yes, a book that was written by the two angels, one on the left who record our bad deeds and one on the right who record our good deeds. Meaning that when you die, you will find a book waiting for you and you will be forced to read this book and see for yourself. Imagine you lived 95 years in this life, what you are going to find in this book. As for example, on Monday 28 February 19, you masturbate or you look at a woman, what exactly you are going to find in this book? Why we need a book for this matter? Does he not have an electronic chip to install to our brain or a computer or tablet or a smartphone? And why exactly do we need to be judged? Perhaps he wants to establish the evidence on us. It's like he tell you, I have a book and he is a witness for what you did in your life. And I have all the evidence to convict you to go to hell forever. And the evidence in this book. In the chapter 84 verse 7 he said, As for those who are given their record in their right hand. And to explain to you what is going to happen exactly on that day, we are all going to be gathered in one place. And Allah will bring our sun that you see in the middle of the day closer to earth by centimeters. Seriously? This God only now our sun and he does not know that there are stars bigger than our sun. Because the writer of the Quran thinks that the stars in the sky are just lumps used to shoot devils that are listening in the heaven. And our sun is just like them, but it is bigger. And he does not understand that if the magnetic field and the atmosphere of earth are gone, we are all going to be burned by the sun radiation without it moving to us. So when the sun gets so close to the people's head, we are going to be sweating according to our deeds. Some will sweat until the water will reach his knee, some to his stomach and some people to their ears. And this only can be a laughing thing because how it is supposed this water going to stand? Is it going to keep following us? And what if the guy next to me has a lower level of sweating water? How is this going to work? When the angels come to distribute the books on the people, the disbelievers will put their hand on their back in hope they will not receive their books. But because Allah knows these tricks, He will order His angel to give disbelievers their books from behind where they hide their hands. In chapter 84 verse 10 he states, And as for those who are given their record in their left hand for behind their back. For example, my book in the beginning will be full of good deeds, but as soon as you reach 2019, things are going to be bad. Because when you left Islam, everything you do before is not going to be counted. But this concept of counting good deeds and bad deeds make me laugh all the time. Because it seems Allah does not have a computer or a high advanced calculus. He only understands to count by single figures and stones and he used a measurement device called in Arabic Al-Mizan. In chapter 7 verse 8 he said, The waiting on that day will be just. As for those whose scale will be heavy with good deeds, only they will be successful. When I was a Muslim, I was fascinated by the narration from the Prophet that said good deeds are multiplied by doing certain things. As for example, asking forgiveness a number of times will multiply by 10 or 50 or 100 times. And as well, if you pray in the mosque, it is not the same as you pray in your home. And even better if you pray in the first row instead of the last row. 
It is so ridiculous to think that somebody is sitting next to you, counting your deeds and spying on you in the public or in your private life. But the people I wish to see on this day of the judgment and I am going to have a laugh at them, the one that got one or two extra bad deeds and is going to be thrown in the hell even if they are a Muslim. Some Muslims think they will never go to hell, but that is wrong. In the Quran, in chapter 19, verse 71, he said, There is none of you who will not pass over it. This is a decree your Lord must fulfill. The mainstream Islam believe in the day of the judgment. The people will be forced to go on top of a bridge thinner than the sword between paradise and hell to cross to the paradise. It's called as Sirat al mustaqim and it's mentioned in the first chapter of the Quran. It's like a circus and you have to walk in the top of the rope without falling. And the people who will fall, they will be caught by angels holding metal hooks in their hands. In Sahih Muslim, in the Book of the Faith, the Prophet said in a long narration, and every person with a hypocrite or a believer will be endowed or given a light, and there will be a spikes and hooks on the bridge of the hell, which will catch and hold of those whom Allah willed. Then the light of the hypocrite will be extinguished, and the believer will secure salvation. The question to be asked here, why all of this has to happen? And why a bridge with hooks? Is he not all knowing and just? So he will decide who is going to paradise and who is going to hell. But rather, in fact, it looks to me like he wants to watch and enjoy this theater. Especially when some people will get picked up by these hooks, when they only have a few meters to finish crossing. Allah and his angel will laugh at him and his failure. But the real question here is, what is the goal behind this theater? Does Allah need entertainment to not feel bored? Or he want to prove something to us? If his goal were not sadistic, then what are they? What is the goal of torturing a human being indefinitely? Are you serious? What has this human being did in his short life compared to the life of the universe to deserve this punishment? For example, someone born as a Christian or disbeliever and he only heard a bad thing about Islam in the media and in the news and he always link Islam to a terrorist attack or suppression of freedom of speech and he does not like it or he does not want to change his original belief. He is going to be punished forever in this hellfire because he refused to change his belief but Muslim they are lucky because they are born as a Muslim and they don't have to change anything to at least guarantee not to be finished into hell forever. How is he supposed to know what is going to happen? Who is going to tell him about the bridge? This nonsense only can make you laugh, especially when people come in from different times. Is Allah going to make an introductory to the sequence of event that has to happen? Or just people going to be programmed to know where to go? And what language is going to be used that day? If Arabic language is going to be used on the judgment day, what about people who never learn Arabic? And how they supposed to speak Arabic? In chapter 7 verse 46 he said, There will be a barrier between paradise and hell. And on the height of that barrier will be people who will recognize the residence of both by their appearance. They will call out to the residents of paradise, peace be upon you. They will have not yet entered the paradise, but eagerly hope to. The chapter 7 in the Quran was named after a specific people that have their good deeds and bad deeds equal. Those people are going to have the most entertainment because they will be like God himself sitting between paradise and hell watching both sides. If the day of the judgment to be true, then the only place you want to be is in Al-A'raf or the bridge. Because it is the same thing God going to do after the day of the judgment finish.
he is going to sit in his throne watch a movie of porn in the paradise and a movie of horror in hell and the good thing for those people is that they are not going to go to hell they are just going to remain in this bridge for a long time before they go into paradise this is just some few nonsense muslim believe going to happen after death and sadly for them they cannot deny it or say it's just a weak narration because they mention in all over the quran and an authentic narration from the prophet and this myth story show that how ignorant people of the 7th century are about the original of the universe and what is the nature of death and they always thought that they are some super beings creature watching us and recording our deeds to judge us when we die and Islam in this manner follow other civilization and culture for trying to answer the ultimate question where we come from and where we go and what is the meaning of life thank you guys for watching and see you again for another video